Hello fellow bookworms, it's Katie. Um, first off, I hope the sound is better. Um, I had some issues last week and it was very quiet and I now changed the settings on my microphone and I hope it's better now. Please let me know in the comments below. If it's still kind of wonky then I will um, ask my technician in residence, which is my sister. Who is my sister? She's a person, not an object. Um, <laughs> and I hope she can help me with it. So um, yes, yeah, so that's uh, the technical issues. Let's get into the stuff. Um, I've read Pride and Prejudice um, for this month's Discovering Jane Austen thingy, which I'll, I'm doing here on my channel, where I read all of Jane Austen's novels over the course of seven months. Um, if you want to join <laughs> this project. Um, I will leave you links to the introduction videos and the Goodreads group that I created created for that purpose in the description below. It's not a... like it's not a... <laughs> it, it's a thing that you can do whenever you want or you can join the month that you want um, or you can you know start in December or wherever, whenever you want. Um, I'll be happy if you if, if you want to join. Um, sorry if for the slapping noise. If you heard that, I'm wearing shorts. So I'm slapping on my thighs um, with my hands because that's what I do. I don't know. Um, it's very warm here and I'm feeling a bit crappy. They're not important to you, it's just a fact. <laughs> um, so, um, where to begin with Pride and Prejudice? It's probably the most famous novel um, most famous novel of Jane Austen's. Um, I don't know if it's the best. Um, I liked it. I liked it a lot. I liked it a lot more than I expected. Again, um, the only other contact that I had with Jane Austen and Pride and Prejudice was um, the Kira Knightley movie of Pride and Prejudice and I watched it. <laughs> I don't know how old I was. I was probably maybe 15, so that was almost 10 years ago, I think. I don't know when it came out, but I was, it was a long time ago. Um, or 17, I, maybe I was, I don't, it's it's not important. Um, I fell asleep <laughs> during watching that movie because it was so boring. There was a lot of, I remember a lot of dancing and broody, moody walking through English landscape and it was very, very boring, very, like very, like a lot, like that. I did not like it. So I, I actually didn't really expect to like Pride and Prejudice, um, but I didn't know how funny the book was. This book is very funny. There's a lot of humor in this book. Again, um, as it was in Sense and Sensibility, I would argue there's more humor in this book. Um, Especially with like Mr. and Mrs. Bennet, Elizabeth's parents. Th Mr. Bennet is kind of always teasing and making fun of his wife and his, his wife is just very silly. She's a very silly woman. Um, so that is very funny to read. Um, and also Elizabeth, especially in the beginning, talking to Mr. Darcy and, you know, just making fun of him, basically. <laughs> so there's a lot of humor in this book and I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I had a bit of a hard time getting into it. Um, it takes a while, it took a while for me to, you know, um, get into the characters and get into the story. Um, I, but eventually they grew on me and when I was reading, like I finished it a, last Sunday, which was a week ago, a week ago, so um, <laughs> Sunday evening, so I couldn't make a video then. Um, so when I finished it, the last, I don't know, 70 pages maybe, I don't know, I read them all in, a, in one go and I was like, I was sitting in my chair and I was like, ah, when they finally got together and I was just so happy and for the both of them and that everything turned out to be so great and yeah <sighs> ah. the things I found interesting were um, that there's again 
a very special sister relationship between Elizabeth and Jane, um, in that Jane is Elizabeth's basically um, person to go to in her family. Her, her, other, her father is very absent. Basically, it's a very a broken home. Basically, uh, but you don't really, I also found that interesting, you don't really get that in the beginning. It takes a while to understand that Elizabeth's family is not really that great or that is not caring or like her father is absent almost all of the time. He he always keeps um, to himself in his library. He doesn't really care for his wife. He he only married her for because she was pretty when she was young and now he kind of has to put up with her and her silliness and um, his wife is also like I said she he's she's very silly she um, her main motivation is that she wants to get all of her daughters marry almost no matter what almost like she doesn't really care for the cost of them getting married um, and that results in very silly behavior, especially of the two youngest daughters and the youngest daughter just being completely whew, like she just gets away with this officer dude who is a total asshole. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I liked all of the relationships and all of the interactions. That is one of the strong points of Jane Austen, which is something that carries her novels, I think, very well as the very defined characters and her ability to um, or that the characters behave throughout um, according to their characterization and that like as in conversations and stuff that they say things that would be believable for them um, and that out of their actions the plot basically um, yeah, evolves and that it feels natural. So that the, you know, that the, do you know what I mean? That the plot feels natural um, because, and is something that occurs because of the characters and because of who they are and because they do what they do because of their character. Do, does that make any sense to anyone? I, I'm not sure if I'm explaining that you know, in a manner that anyone can understand what I'm actually talking about. Um, so yeah, we have absent father, silly mother, um, and the daughters kind of cope with that differently. Jane is always seeing the good in people and not being very, like, not, you know, Elizabeth is a bit snarky and sarcastic and um, ashamed of her family, basically, most of the time. Um, she, but she always, she also has a very strong tie to her family. She also cares for them. She also loves them. Um, Mrs. Bennet is just a really bad mother. I'm sorry, someone has to say it. She is also described as being very nervous and basically having, like, I don't know, depression I think because she always like when something happens she stays in her bedroom and doesn't come down and like makes it, it's it feels like borderline almost because she makes her daughter sit with her all the time all the attention goes to her and she doesn't really like um, care for her daughters or um, like puts their feelings first, she puts her own feelings first and like I, I don't like this <laughs> kind of mother. That's that's not a good mother. Um, yeah, so we have that relationship between Jane and Elizabeth and um, those two being their um, closest, you know, person in their family. Um, yeah, so then we have Elizabeth and Mr. Darcy. Um, Yes, well, let's talk about them for a second. So, those two eventually end up with it, with each other. They are both, they both have flaws, definitely. Mr. Like, the title is perfect, Pride and Prejudice. Mr. Dorothy is just, you know, one of these, that's basically the epitome of British gentlemen. I picture every British aristocrat being basically like this, like, 
No, I'm better than anyone. No. Nobody is as good as I am. You're not good for... Yeah, I'm too good for you. Basically like that. Um, and Elizabeth is not putting up with his nonsense and... Um, but she's also not... She, she doesn't really... Um, she's not willing to change her mind. Basically she is... She relies on like um, what other people say about people and you know forms her judgment very easily on that account and goes with it and is not willing to change her judgment of someone and is prejudiced, you know, towards this person. So um, I like how they gradually change and I like how you know the events and other characters you know um, actions gradually make them both change their mind and um, they eventually fall for each other and it's beautiful <laughs> and they both, you know, admit their faults and apologize. Oh, I don't know. Do they apologize? I don't know from the top of my head, um, but I think they do. And I am I was so happy when it finally, finally, you know, when they finally end up together and are getting married and everything is fine so um that's just something um that i just wanted to mention is that this story prime and prejudice reminds me a lot of a cinderella story um not exactly in the same way as like a disney cinderella with talking mice and glass slippers and a fairy godmother no um but there are definitely elements i think that are there that remind me of a Cinderella story. Take Elizabeth, she is the poor um, Cinderella type girl coming from a family who doesn't really care for her, her mother doesn't really care for her and um, it's not, it's not, she's not abusive like she, probably Elizabeth still has like maids and like she doesn't have to do work, uh, the housework and stuff but um her mother doesn't really care for her, her sisters are making fun of her, her, her younger sisters are her mother's favorite and get, you know, all the money and gifts. Um, her father is not is pretty much absent. Um, and, you know, Jane maybe is the fairy godmother, not in the sense that she gives her, like, dresses and stuff, but in the sense that she gives her encouragement and um, someone to talk to and is just overall a good person. And Mr. Darcy, I would argue, is very much <laughs> the Prince Charming, like, this rich dude with a wonderful house and ground and, um, you know, not really looking for a, a wife, but they meet at balls and like he basically in the end whisks her away to his estate and they are happily, live happily ever after. So I think there are definitely elements of Cinderella in there, not like in your face, but very subtly. And I think that's probably why this story is so famous, um, because who doesn't, who doesn't, you know, want, like Cinderella is in itself a very um, famous story and um, a lot of, like, that's why the Disney versions are so popular, because every girl basically wants to be whisked away, or dreams of being whisked away from their, um, you know, boring, mundane, poor life by a rich dude to his castle and, you know, be happy ever after. So, yeah, that's basically everything I have to say about this book. Um, I don't know. <laughs> what do you think about Pride and Prejudice? Um, what, what is your favorite character? Um, <laughs> mine is probably Mr. Bennett, although he's a pretty crappy dad, but I like his humor and his, like, teasing his wife and she doesn't really understand what he's talking about because she's not very bright and, I don't know, I... <laughs> he was fun to read, basically. Um, so, uh, yeah, next month we're going to read Mansfield Park. And then after that, we're going to read Emma in June. No, in June, we're going to read Mental Park. And in July, we're going to read Emma, which are the which are the two like biggest novels in my bound up compendium. Um, they're both having about 300 pages. So I'm, 
you know, <laughs> powering through. Um, definitely tell me what you think about Pride and Prejudice and um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're having a beautiful, beautiful day, beautiful Sunday or whatever day it is when you're watching this and I hope you're reading something magical. I will see you soon. Bye!